Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into the first episode of X One Gotti, where you guys ask me any kind of sports questions that you have regarding the Washington Commanders or, again, just the whole entire sports world. So if you would like to be featured in a video like this, all you have to do is email me at agswangotti at gmail.com with your question. Now, before we get into this episode, make sure you guys like this video so I can see that you guys want to see more of these. Subscribe if you're new and turn on post notifications. We're on the road to 6,000 subscribers. So please hit that subscribe button again if you haven't already. Now with that out the way, let's get straight into today's video. So the first Question on Axe One Gotti Episode One. Riz Cornu with the first ever question says, "What's up, man? So I've been uh, really thinking about ways to better our team, and even if it's non-realistic, I would like your opinion. Say we send Chase Young for Kyle Pitts straight up. Another would be send Antonio Gibson to Buffalo for Matt Milano. I know we can't keep all of our players. Eventually, there uh, there will be wanting big money contracts." We'll send them out, and I think this year will be the best year to do so, or best time to do so. Some of our better players can be replaced. Cornu. So I appreciate you for your question. Honestly, that's not realistic. At least the Chase Young uh, for Kyle Pitts straight up isn't realistic. I mean, the, the Falcons defense, they're building a really good defense. They already have a really good secondary. We're getting Jesse Bates, A.J. Terrell, and they just traded for Jeff Okuda. Um, so they got a nice secondary. Yeah, they need some edge rushing help, but I don't know if they would be willing to trade their superstar tight end, Kyle Pitts, uh, and especially starting Desmond Ritter this year. They want to have him have as many targets as possible. So I don't think they would be interested in the trading for Chase Young, especially since he really has no value to his name right now. And you're practically asking for them to give up their best weapon. Yeah, they got Drake London, but let's be quite honest. Quite, uh, Kyle Pitts is their best weapon on offense. So I don't think they would do that. Uh, Matt Milano for Antonio Gibson, I don't think Buffalo would do that either because they just signed Matt Milano to a, long, to, uh, to a new deal. So they obviously want him to be a cornerstone. We do need linebacker badly, but I don't think they will be willing to do that. And then I love Antonio Gibson. I value him highly. Uh, I think he can. he's a really, really good talent. We just have to use him in the correct way so that's my answer for that shout out to you i appreciate you for your participation again risk cornell the next question is going to be from Z zino for real he says are you going to do any madden videos or streams while you talk about the nfl uh so no no more Madden streams, at least right now. Maybe down the line, but I have no intentions on playing Madden anymore, to be honest with you. Uh, NFL talk videos, definitely plan on doing that as long as you guys support it. I love showing my versatility and talking about all 32 teams because I know I am capable of. But if you guys aren't going to support those videos, I don't want to, like, put so much effort into doing that when I know it isn't going to get the results that I want. So if you're willing to support me talk about the whole NFL, I would definitely do so. Alante, shout out to my man Alante uh, Elthridge with his question. He says, first off, love the channel. I'm a big fan. My question is, do you also do music on the side because your intro is be lit? Thanks, uh, thanks, and be blessed. So, yes, I do make music. I do it for fun, to be honest with you. I record and mix my own songs for fun. I don't put them out or anything because I don't have no aspirations of being a rapper or a singer or anything, but I do enjoy making my own music. I have a ton of songs that I just keep personally to myself. I mean, they're on my other YouTube channel. The link is in the description, but I don't, like, promote them or anything for real, for real because, again, that's just something that I, that I do to myself. Um, Who knows? Maybe making music is something that God has for me that I'm just being blind to right now, but I definitely... And make music on the side, but I mean, not really as a rapper, just for my own personal enjoyment. Uh, but I appreciate your question, Alante. This question comes from Mr. No Joke. He says, Trent and si um, Simpson in the second round would be a great pick if we were to go safety, uh, if we weren't, if we went safety or corner in the NS 16. So Trent Simpson, uh, he says, would be a good pick. And honestly speaking, I would not mind that pick at all either. Uh, especially considering the fact that we do need a linebacker. 
Uh, we need somebody to pair up with Jamin Davis and now Cody Barton. Uh, you guys know how I feel about this linebacker robe. I definitely think it needs to be upgraded. Uh, Kalik Hudson is also another name that I, I don't want to forget, but I just hope they play him because when he's on the field, he can actually go. So I would not mind that pick at all. I appreciate you, uh, Mr. No Joke, for your questioning. King Dynasty, K9, with the next question, he says, What do you see the future for the Washington, uh, for Washington? Do you think the new owner will change the name again? P.S. Love your videos. I appreciate you, King Dynasty, for the support. And what do I think about the future? Do I think the new owner is going to change the name? No, I don't. I don't think the owner is going to change the name because I don't think a lot of people realize how long that process is and how and uh what you have to go through to change the name it's not just simple oh i'm going to change the name. you got to trademark it you got to make sure you can clear the name you got to make sure you print out all this merchandise which is going to cost money and then also the process of making a new logo and brand we all went we all remember what happened to us uh from afar we obviously don't know the day in and day out operation of trying to pick a new name but from afar we've seen how long it took almost two years to find a commander's name so next question comes from tiger i appreciate you for your question he says if anthony richardson was available in the first round would you get him if anthony richardson is at 16 to be honest with you it would be tempting because a lot of people think he is going to be going earlier but personally no i'm gonna put all my chips on the basket in the basket for sam howe um, however, I don't view Anthony Richardson as a day one starter, so he could come in, hypothetically, sit behind uh, Sam Howell and uh, Jacoby Brissett, but it doesn't make sense. If you genuinely feel like Sam Howell is going to be a future and you want to give him a shot, you don't want to bring in any threat or any potential replacement for Sam Howell this year, so it doesn't make sense to go Anthony Richardson at 16. Uh, so that is to answer your question. No, I wouldn't go Anthony Richardson at 16. Appreciate your question, Tiger. Next question comes from uh, yeah, Meek Home 44. Uh, it says, hypothetically, if Henry Hooker is there with our comp pick in the third, would you support drafting him? Yes, I would. I made a video on Hendon Hooker uh, before, and go check it out if you haven't already. And I fully support getting Hendon Hooker in the third round. Now, a lot of people genuinely think Hendon Hooker is going to be a first-round pick. I don't know if he is. He may be a high second. But if he somehow is going to be in the third round, I would definitely take Hendon Hooker for sure. Next question comes from Sneed Davis and Lindell. He says this. Hi, Juan. My first question is, what is the ceiling still for Chase Young? Can he still be generational and get 20-plus sacks a season? Or have we seen enough to know his ceiling is lower than that? First, I'm going to answer this. Chase Young's ceiling has still not been reached fully. However, I'm not sure if he is a 20-and-a-half sack kind of guy. Don't know, but I do know he is definitely still raw. He still has a lot of learning, still has a lot of potential. He's still super young. So I definitely think he, we haven't seen the final form of Chase Young. However, I don't know if he's a 20 and a half sack kind of guy. Hopefully he uh, he is because, I mean, he has the potential to be one of the best edge rushers in football. He just has to put it all together and stay healthy. Uh, next question is, what is the ceiling on the team? If Sam Howell turns out to be that dude, could this team potentially contend for the division or even the NFC? Or do we still have holes to fill? Okay, so yes, I definitely think this team's ceiling is through the roof if Sam Howe is in fact that dude. Because Sam Howe being that dude now alleviates most of our problems, which is not having a quarterback. Having a quarterback carries a lot of weight on the team. Your team does not have to be that good. Yes, you still have to surround your quarterback with talent, but your, your quarterback can carry a lot of the uh, load and the weight if your team, uh, if he's in fact that dude. So if Sam Howe is that dude, already considering that our roster is pretty talented, especially on the offensive side of the ball, the ceiling for this team is through the roof. Um, and then you said, lastly, uh, if an owner buys the team this offseason, what should we expect? Do they clean house immediately, or does the new owner uh, want to take their guy at QB and trade up? 
Um, no, I don't think the owner is going to claim immediately. I mean, we're still sitting in April, mid uh, to early parts of April, and no sale has been completed. So the sale probably isn't going to happen until like May or June, and it's already too late to clean house. It wouldn't make any sense because you're already past the draft and all that. You're basically trying to focus on getting ready for the regular season. So him coming in and, you know, cleaning the house would not make sense at all, to be honest with you. So I don't expect him to do that, and I don't. Want to say I rule out the new owner wanting to get their guy. However, again, depending on how long this 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 uh the sale takes, if it doesn't happen in the next two weeks, which I don't think is going to happen, then then, then the owner isn't going to have any say on this year, upcoming draft. So I'm gonna go ahead and say no. The new owner doesn't do neither one of those things. So appreciate you, Sneed Davis Lindell, for your question. Uh, the next question comes from Timothy. Felton, shout out to you, Timothy Felton. I appreciate you for your question. He says, what do you think about the XFL DC defenders? And if they could win the championship, will you buy any of their merchandise uh, if you don't have any already? So what do I think about the DC defenders? I think they're way better than the Washington Commanders have ever been in, in the last decade plus, uh, two, three decades plus, if, uh, if you will. Um, one thing that I've learned about the DC defenders is that this city, this area, is dying for a winner. So if you think we're supporting the D.C. defenders like that, people out there already feel going crazy for the XFL, could you imagine what 60,000, 70,000 Washington Commanders fans would look like at FedEx Field for an NFC Championship game? I'm just saying, Washington Commanders, get it together, bro, because we ready to support y'all. This area is dying for a football team to be good again. So, that's my thoughts on it, and yeah, I definitely might buy some DC Defenders merch. If you want to send me some DC Defenders merch, let me know, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I see them out there, De'Ara King, you know, uh, um, Jordan Tamalu, you know, a former Washington commander. So, I, I see I see them out there balling, man. They just clinched the playoff berth, so shout out to the Defenders, man. Uh, next question is from Estefan Sanchez. Shout out to you. He says, favorite era of Washington. Uh, should the commanders bring back the alternate uh, alternatives from the Redskins days? For example, the leather helmet unis. Uh, fan meetups for any games this year. So, favorite era of Washington. As y'all know, I'm young, so I don't have any like memorable championship memories. Um, but I would probably say my favorite Washington era from my time would probably have to be that 2015 to like 2017 stretch because yeah we weren't like we weren't like a perennial Super Bowl favorite but I always had false hope I always thought we had a good team obviously because Kirk Cousins was potentially our franchise guy we had Pierre Garçon Deshaun Jackson Jordan Reed Vernon Day that offense was so good man Sean McVay at the hound uh, and then you you know we went out and got Josh Norman DJ Swearinger a couple years later like that team to me in that era felt so like you know, felt like a team that could actually compete for something. We only had one playoff berth through that stretch, though, uh, with the loss of the Packers. Um, so I would probably say that has to be my favorite era. But again, you gotta, you know, you guys know I'm young, so I haven't had anything, anything exciting to cheer for, which is dreadful. Last question of the first episode comes from Charles Hardy. He says, "Hey Juan." I wanted to ask your opinion on why we refused to go and get a bona fide coverage linebacker in free agency. This would solidify our front seven and make our defense a top 10 outfit for sure. I don't know, man. I don't know why we refuse to go ahead and get a linebacker. Because, I mean, we talk about the linebacker group being not being the best for years now. They have acknowledged that. So, I don't understand why they don't get a top guy. I don't understand why they don't go out and get a, try to at least potentially get a Tremaine Edmonds this past year. Or a David Long Jr. Or the guy that signed with the, uh, the, the Giants, the former coach linebacker. Like, I don't know why we don't try to go ahead and get those guys, bro. But we always complain about the linebacker group. Uh, maybe find another another guy like Cole Holcomb. We found Cole Holcomb in the fifth round. He was a stud for us. So hopefully we can find another guy like that. But honestly, bro, I don't know why we don't get a bona fide linebacker in, the, um, in free agency. So, yeah. There you have it. That is the first episode of Act 1 Gotti. If you guys want to be uh, featured in future videos and have your name read out loud like this, please 
leave your questions in the email x one at gmail.com. Thank you so much for the support. See you guys in the next video. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. I'm on the road to 6,000 subscribers. See you guys next time. I'm out. Peace. Oh, cost me one time. That's gonna get you pop. Get you pop. Get you drop. Slide on the one where that get you locked on. Stop it till I get me a hundred more Shots in his hair, ring his bell like